Welcome to our class on sketch pens. I'm Kelly Waymond, and in this class I'll show you how to use pens in your Silhouette cutting machine to create in new ways that go beyond simply cutting or printing your designs. You can use sketch pens in the Silhouette Cameo, Portrait, or Curio. I'll be using the Cameo 3 that can hold two tools at once, which is similar to Curio, but you can also use sketch pens in any Silhouette machine, even if it only has one tool holder. We'll be using Silhouette Studio version 4.3 Standard Edition most of the time, but I'll show you a few extra features you get with Designer Edition, and we'll point those out when we get to them. The tools you'll use for sketching designs are simple. You'll use sketch pens, a pen holder, and that can be adjustable to use other types of pens. You'll need some type of blade and you can use paper and that means any color or any size of paper. Once you know how sketch designs work, you may want to get creative and try other tools and materials, especially if you have a curio. If you're wondering when you might use sketch pens, let me show you some common applications. Sketch pens are useful for drawing sketch designs that you create or buy from the Silhouette Design Store. These look different from full color printable designs or cut designs. You can also have your machine write text and designs with ink instead of printing. This is great for writing with colors like white, glitter, or metallic colors that can't be printed. And that can be really fun to do on dark paper. Sketch pens also allow you to write on small paper scraps of any color that are too small to fit in your printer. You might also want to use sketch pens to sketch a design before cutting to test its size or placement. As you can see, sketching can broaden the capabilities of your Silhouette machine, and you can get really creative with how you use your machine's sketch functions. As we move on, we'll cover the important points and techniques you need to know as we create a few sketch projects. In this first project, you'll learn how to find sketch designs and do a simple sketch and cut. Sketch designs are different from regular cut designs because they're made out of single lines that are meant to be drawn. Instead of using a blade in your machine, you'll insert a pen. You'll see what I mean as we go into the software. In Silhouette Studio, I want to open a sketch design. So I'll do that by going to my Store tab and this will open a browser where you can search specifically for sketch designs. So you could type in a keyword in the search field or you can just look at categories of designs. So I'll go to designs and click on cards and labels. And then down here I'm going to check the box for the filter for sketch. This is now showing all of these designs as sketch designs and you can see that because they've got this pencil icon. That indicates that they're a sketch design. So you could scroll through here, or you can use keywords to find what you're looking for. But this sketch filter helps you narrow down your results to sketch files. Fonts can be a little bit trickier looking for a sketch font. So what I usually do is type in sketch font in the search bar. And this will bring up more than just sketch fonts, but what you're looking for are single line fonts instead of those that are filled in. So let's go back to Silhouette Studio. And I know I've got some sketch designs already in my library, so I'll click on the Library tab. And I'm going to type in Presence in the search bar. And then I'm going to filter by sketch. So click File Types, and I just want to check the box for sketch designs. So that has found my sketch files that are related to presence. So I'll just double click to open the one I want. Some sketch files come without cut lines and some do come with cut lines. This file doesn't come with cut lines, so I'm going to create my own cut line by drawing a rectangle for the size of my card front. So I'm going to make that 5.5 inches wide. And 
and 4.25 inches high. And I'm just using the scale choice in my quick access toolbar. Now I'm going to group each present to itself. When I select these, it's all in different pieces. So I'm going to group those. Again, using the quick access toolbar. And then I want one more of these presents. So I'm going to replicate a copy of the shorter present. So I'll open the replicate panel and I'll just mirror to the left and slide that over there. So now I just want to resize that to fit my card front. I'm going to do a little bit of arranging here to make sure those are spaced nicely. And just drag a corner handle to resize it. Once I have that about the right size, I'll go ahead and group those presents together and select outline of the card and the presence and just kind of center that. Nudge that down a little with my arrow keys and so that looks good. Now I'm going to zoom in so we can see this better. I want to change the line color for my sketch designs green. Um, usually I like to set my line color to match the pen color I'm going to be using. So I'll just use the quick line color up in my quick access toolbar and change that line color green for this sketch design. Okay, and then we'll set up our page size, make sure that it is set to 12 by 12 for my cameo. And we just need to make sure that this is positioned within the cut boundaries of the page. All right, so we are ready to go to the Send tab. And when you're working with sketch pens, it's really helpful to cut by line color. So that is how we're going to work in this class. We'll go to the Line tab. So we've got this ready. So the tool number over here only applies if you're using a machine with the dual tool holder, like the Cameo 3 or the Curio. Hey, Dennis, can I have you switch that? <laughs> can, let, me, let me just read that yeah, line again. Tool, no. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't warn you about that. <laughs> so the tool number over here only applies if you're using a machine with the dual tool holder, like the Cameo 3 or Curio. If you're using a portrait or an older Cameo, all you need to do is add a pause between the tools. So I'm going to show you two ways to set up tool switching in the software so you can know how to work with a single or a dual tool holder. So we're going to work with the pause method first. Okay, so the pause method for using a single tool holder, first you'll just ignore this tool number column. If you've got a, a portrait or something like that plugged in, you won't even see that. Uh, we want to make sure that this green line color is at the top, so you can actually drag those around as you need to and position them. But what's at the top is going to sketch first, cut or sketch first. The material I want is pattern paper. Medium. For my action on this one, I'm going to choose sketch and that automatically chooses my sketch pen for the tool. Now the red line we want to cut last and again we want the material to be pattern paper. And this one we want to leave with the cut action and we do want it to use the blade. So that red line is set to cut last and we're going to right click on the green and just choose Add Pause. You can also add and remove the pause down here instead of the right click. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to put the sketch pen in the tool holder first and set the blade aside. When you send the job to your machine, the top line will do its sketching and then it's going to pause. At that point, 
you'll remove the pen and put in the Next Lines tool, which is the blade, and click Resume in the software. You don't need to unload the mat in between. If you do have a machine with a dual tool holder, you can save time by having it move continuously from the first task to the next. So I'm going to show you the dual tool method next. All right, so we're going to remove this pause. And now if you've got a dual tool machine, it is going to show this tool number column. And again, we want to drag the green line to the top. And this time we want to set our tool number to the blue circle or the right hand side. Again, we want our material as pattern paper. We want the action to be sketch and we want the tool to be a sketch pen. And then the red line should be there to cut last. The tool number should remain with the red circle. So we're going to put the blade in the left side. And again, pattern paper medium for the material action will be cut and the tool will be the blade. So this is almost ready to send. We just need to insert our blades and pens into the correct holders and load our paper. And now with the tool holder, we set it up in the software so our blade is in the left tool holder. It matches the right circle here, matches the right circle on the software. And then this one has a blue circle and that's what we set for our sketch pen. So we'll go ahead and put our sketch pen in the right hand side and that is ready to send. So that does the green with the sketching first, just like we set it up in the software, the right hand side first and then the left hand side exactly as we set the order in the software. You should note that sketch pen designs can take a while to sketch, so just be patient. The more lines in your design, the longer it will take. Now we can attach this to a card base. I'll just take my cutout off of my mat. I'm going to flip my mat over so I get less curling on my paper. And we can attach this to a card base. I've already got this cut out. I'll use some adhesive. Any kind of adhesive works fine to apply a card front. Just line that up. And so we've got a really cute little sketched card. Now, if you want to do something to step it up a little bit, you can add a little happy birthday uh, sentiment. This is done exactly the same way. I've sketched that and I've got a cut line to cut the outside of it. And if you want to step it up even further, you can take your sketch designs and just color them in with colored pencils just to make it a little more fun. Now you know how to choose sketch designs and how to use cut by line color to tell your silhouette machine which lines to sketch and which lines to cut. In our next project, we'll work with another sketch design and sketch fonts. In this next project, I want to show you a few advantages to sketching that I really like. I'll show you how to use a favorite regular pen in the Silhouette Adjustable Pen Holder, We'll use it to sketch on dark paper that may not work as a printing cut, and we'll do it on a small piece of paper that's too small for a printer. And we'll use a couple of sketch fonts so you can see how they look. So in Silhouette Studio, I've got a blank document open, and I'm going to open a file called Sketch Bicycle. Now you can see, if we zoom in, that this is made up of single lines that are going to draw with a pen. This would just cut your paper up if you tried to use a blade here. My paper that I'm going to cut, or that I'm going to sketch on is already pre-cut to 4.75 inches by 4.75 inches. So I'm gonna set that up right now as my media size in the page setup panel. So I just need to resize my bicycle at about 4.4 inches wide is good. 
and I just need to align this onto the page. And then I'm going to add some text. I'll get this about where I want it. Okay, so for the text, I'm just going to click my text tool on the left as usual, click down a cursor, and I'm going to type hello and enter. I miss you. Now, this text might look normal if you are used to cutting from vinyl or colored paper, but sketch pens don't automatically know that. They only know cut or sketch along the cut lines on the page. Now, I don't want to sketch just the outline of these letters, so I need to either choose a sketch font or add an inner fill. So let's choose for this project a couple of sketch fonts. I'll double click my text, enter text edit mode, and I'll put it on center justification. And then I'm going to highlight this first line and open my text style panel so I can choose a font. And this one I'm going to choose a font called Mr. Stripey. And I like that at the size it is. So I'm going to now select my lower line. And this one I want to change to a sketch font called Stick Sketch Font. And this one I need to change to a 24 point, make it a little smaller. And I need to see, change that line spacing to close that gap there. So I'm going to put that at 30%. Now, a true sketch font, as you enlarge it, it's going to keep its lines tight together, even when you make it really big. So, as you can see down here, it still looks like a single stroke, and that's what makes a sketch font work really well with pens. So, I'll undo that and get it back to the size I want. And I want to change all of my line colors on this page to a black line color. I don't have white, so I'm going to go ahead and use black. I will be sketching this in white, but I just want it to be a line color that's different from the normal red. Now, I could add another outer cut line again like we did in our last project, but my paper is already cut to the right size, and I'm just going to be sketching and not cutting this time. Okay, so I'll just spend a minute and arrange these so they look good nudge that with my arrow key and as I zoom out a little bit yeah I think that looks good and so we are ready to go into the send tab and again we're going to be working with the line tab so we are going to be sketching by line color if you're working with a dual tool holder go ahead and switch that to the blue circle the right hand side uh, you don't have to do that, but I generally always sketch in the right side and keep my blade in the left side. Uh, if you have a single tool holder, that part doesn't matter. We're going to set the material to pattern paper, which actually it is still. And we want to make sure that our action says sketch. And our tool, we could leave it at sketch pen, but we're going to use the pen holder this time. So let's go ahead and choose the pen holder and I'll show you how to uh, get that, get our pen into the pen holder before we actually press send. This time I'm going to use a gel pen in the adjustable pen holder and so I'll show you how to do that. Make sure that your cap is off of your pen and there are three collars to accommodate different widths of pen and we're going to use the medium one which is the white collar. So you can either put it loosely into the main pen holder or you can slide it onto your pen first. Either way works fine. Um, but your goal is 
to be able to screw this collar in and hold it tight and have the tip of your pin not any higher than the top of the cap. So while that's still a little bit loose, we'll put the cap on and make sure that the pin does not go, does not push that out. And we'll just tighten that, make any adjustments as you need to. So we want the tip of the pin to be at the same height as the cap here. We've got that and it's nice and tight. We don't want it to move around while it's sketching. Um, that's ready to go. So we will go ahead and put our pin in the right hand side, which we set up in the software. Lock it in place and we'll just ignore the blade. We don't have it set to cut anything so the blade can sit there. It won't do anything. But one more thing I like to do is to scribble on a little bit of scratch paper to get that ink flowing. Put that on the mat and load it and then I can click send in the software and that's just going to do that one line color to sketch our design in white. So if you look at these lines, you can see that it's nice and crisp and clean and kind of looks like you could have drawn it, written it yourself, but you didn't have to. Your silhouette machine did it for you instead. We'll just go ahead and put this on a five by five inch card base with some adhesive. Now we've covered a lot of the advantages to using sketch pens with this project. We found out we're able to write with white pen on colored paper. We found out we're able to write with white on colored paper instead of trying to print to get a similar look. We're able to use a small piece of paper that would be difficult to print on. You also know how to use your own pens in the adjustable holder. And we also looked at single sketch fonts that are perfect for sketching text. Next, let's look at sketching with multiple colors. So far we've sketched with single colors, but now I want to show you how to sketch with multiple colors. We'll also talk in this project about adding sketch fills. So I've started designing a birthday card and I want to sketch a design in multiple colors to add to this card base. So I'll go to my library and I'm going to use this flower pot sketch, so I'll double click to open it. And we've gotten lucky with this file because it's already broken up into pieces that we can recolor and group pretty easily. So I'll ungroup this. And I want to change this series of line colors. Make sure you're not changing fill colors. Uh, we want to leave this one as the outer cut line, and so we're just going to leave that red as a cut line. The middle section, we'll go ahead and group that, and this one's just going to be a black line color. Now this one on the left, I want the bottom piece to be blue. I want the stems to be green. And these flowers I want to be yellow. Now if I just click a selection box around them, I also select the green stem. So I'm going to hold my shift key and click the green stem again so I deselect it. So now all I've got selected are these flower tops. So I'll go ahead and group those and change those to a yellow line color. I'll go ahead and group all of those together. Since we're eventually sketching by line color, you can group any colors together and still sketch or cut them individually. 
Now we'll select all three of these flower segments and I'll use my center tool in the click access toolbar to center them all together. If you're using a different, a different design and they don't uh, center perfectly, just remember you can select those and use your arrow keys on your keyboard to nudge them into position. So those are the way I want them. I'll go ahead and click group. And these are actually already a nice size to fit on this card front I'm going to cut. So we'll move this aside and go ahead and work on the text. I've already typed out happy birthday and I've used the happy birthday font. And as we zoom in, you um, can see this is pretty small and delicate. You wouldn't want to cut this with paper or even vinyl because it's so delicate at this size. That makes sketching a great choice. Now, as I mentioned in the previous lesson, if we sketch now, we it would only sketch the outline as you see it here. Last time we remedied that by choosing a sketch font. Uh, and this time I want to show you how to convert it to a sketchable design that looks more bold or filled in. So first we're going to select it and we'll go ahead and weld that together so we don't have to worry about these little overlaps. I'll just choose right click and weld. And I can also group that at the same time so those stay together as we move them. And I want to sketch this in the same, with the same pen as the middle section of my flowers and we chose black for that. So I'm going to choose that same black line color for this sentiment. All right, and then I'm going to make a duplicate copy of this because I'm going to show you two things, two ways to get a um, more bold look for that or filled in. If you have designer edition or above, you have access to special sketch, sketch functions that change the outline or the fill of a design. We'll go ahead and find that in the line effects panel. If you've got a small monitor, you might need to click on this little pop out arrow, arrow uh, but you're looking for this little scribble icon and that's the line effects panel. So we've got our text selected. Let's choose an edge effect down here. I'm going to go with the rough one, which is the fourth one over. Now this text is really small, so it's going to look messy until we refine it. So I'll go over to the Advanced tab, and I'm going to set my stroke length to 0 0.875, and I'm going to decrease the density to about 50%. And you can play with around with those advanced um, adjustments to get the look that you want. But I think this sketchy look works well with the sketchy flowers we've got set up. Now your sketch effect are not limited to text. Let's look at these hearts for a minute. We'll zoom in. You can also add designer edition, uh, with designer edition you can also add sketch fills. So I'm going to ungroup this and I'm going to choose back in the main tab of my line effects. I'm going to use this second row for designer edition sketch effects. So I'll just choose a couple of different sketch fills here and you can even uh, combine them with edge effects. Again, you can adjust these with the advanced tab. Um, something I like to do is play with the offset so you can make it go beyond or uh, leave more of a gap or get closer to that edge effect that you choose. So that's fun to play with. Okay, so we're not going to actually use these hearts. I just wanted to show you those sketch effect fills you could get with Designer Edition. Um, but let's discuss another option for filling text or other shapes. We're going to look at this, these happy birthdays again. So line effects became available to everyone 
for all Silhouette, Silhouette Studio users in 4.2.471. And this is a great way to use your sketch pens. So we're going to select this unaltered happy birthday sentiment. And in the first tab of the line effects, on the first row, those are available for any edition of Silhouette Studio. Those are simple fill effects. So we can choose any one of them. One of my favorites is the spiral, which is on the last, which is the last one on the row. And you can see that it starts to fill in with little lines. And as you decrease the spacing, those inner lines get tighter and tighter and fills in that font. So I'm going to drag it all the way to the left and you can see that that looks um, pretty tightly filled. Just keep in mind that when you add all those extra little lines, when you add fills to a sketch design, that's just going to take longer for your machine to do all those extra little lines. So just be prepared for that. So now we've got two choices to sketch our sentiment on this card. I'm going to go with the filled version as I demonstrate how to set up sketching with multiple colors in the Send tab. Now I'll go ahead and arrange this. I want to make sure that my flower and my sentiment looks good within this card front that's, that we're going to cut. So that looks good. Uh, I'm going to group this text with the card base. So those two will stay together. And I'm, so I'm going to sketch and cut on a piece of pattern paper and then I'll move this, these flowers to the opposite side of the mat that we're going to sketch and cut on a piece of white paper. And since I'm using a whole 12 by 12 inch mat, I know I've got room for both. The cut lines are on the outer edge of my flowers and my edge of my card base. Those should still be red. And then the various sketch lines should be different line colors. Okay, so we're ready to move to the Send tab. Go to the Cut by Line Color tab. And generally you want to sketch first and cut last and you can choose the order for every line color. We're going to drag the red box to the bottom because we want to cut last. That's the one that's going to stay as a cut line with the blade. And then we'll go ahead and set the order to sketch first the black and then the yellow, then green, and then blue. And finally, it's going to cut the red. Each material we want to set to pattern paper medium, and you would choose that, of course, for your own paper that you're going to cut. This bottom red line, we want to be a cut action with the blade, and then we want to change the action on all the rest of these to sketch. And you'll see that automatically set those so it's expecting a in the tool holder. Now if you ever have extra colors on this page for this tab for cut by line color, if you don't want to cut those extra colors, you can just uncheck the box right, right here. Okay, so here's what I want to have happen. I want to sketch everything in black and then sketch everything in yellow. And I've got two tool holders so I can do those two lines at a time. So my black pen is going to go in the left or red tool holder. My yellow pen is going to go in the right or blue holder. And so I'm going to change that right here on the screen right now. I want to be able to swap the colors between yellow and green, so I'm going to add a pause. Then I want to sketch with green in the left tool holder, and I want to sketch with right in the blue tool holder. So I'll change that blue one, blue line to blue, and add one more pause. Once that's done with those two, and everything is sketched, I can, with that final pause, take the pens out and just add the blade in the left tool holder. 
and that will cut my final section. So I can fit two papers on my mat and they're the same thickness so I've got them all set as the same material. If you needed to cut separate thicknesses of paper you could also set these as separate line colors here and give them their own settings. And again if you only have one tool holder you'll just ignore this tool number column and you can just add a pause in between each line and swap your tool after each line. Now this might seem complicated, but if you practice using the line color tab, I think you'll find that it's easy to think through and logically set up your cuts. Now that we have it set up, let's load our two colors of paper on the mat, load our pens and load it into the Cameo before we cut. When it pauses, you're gonna see it show the pause on the screen. At that point, you're gonna change your pen or your blade and click resume in the send tab of the software each time. You'll leave your mat loaded the whole time until it's completely finished. So to match what we've set up in the software, I'm going to sketch and cut on white on this left side, and I'm going to sketch and cut on the pattern paper on the right side. And we've set it up so we're going to do the black first on the left and then sketch with the yellow on the right and when, then when that pauses we'll swap out the tools. So we've reached the first pause in the software and that just holds in place. We don't need to unload the mat. So we're just gonna take out these pens that are here. And we've got it set up so the green is gonna sketch next in the left tool holder and the blue is gonna sketch next in the right. So when those are in there, we'll click resume on the software. So we have reached our second pausing point. We can take these out and the final section is just going to cut with the blade in the left side. So we'll get that loaded in there and click resume again. It's all finished so we'll unload. All right, so I've taken these off of my cutting mat and I'm gonna add the flower cutout to my sketched base. Just use some foam adhesive for that, it makes it pop off the card. and we'll add it to this card base that I've already cut out with some adhesive. And finally add it to just a solid base one last time.
So this is the version with the full sketch fill that we used. And I've also got a version that has the sketch effects where we used the designer edition um, just to kind of make a scribbled look that kind of matches the sketch flowers. That's about the most complicated cut you'll ever have to deal with. You can add more colors and just follow the same process of ordering by line color and adding pauses so you can switch out pens. Now that you know how to sketch in multiple colors, we'll ease up a little and use the line effects one more time in our last project to sketch a photograph. In this final lesson, we'll turn a photo into a sketch design. We'll do that with tracing and line effects. Action. Keep in mind as we proceed that not all photos work well for tracing to convert to sketch designs. Uh, pictures with a white background is much better than a busy background. So I have a photo open and the background on this one's not too bad. Your photo needs enough contrast between lights and darks so the software can easily find those dark areas. I've already cropped this photo to fit a 5 by 7 inch frame, so I'll go ahead and open the trace panel. First we choose select trace area and drag a box around the photo. I'm also going to zoom in a little bit. So this yellow, these yellow areas start to fill in as they find the dark areas. So you'll usually increase the threshold, but that also depends on the photo you're using. And I've found that photos of people often do better using the high pass filter because that looks for edges and not just general darks and lights. So I'm going to set the high pass, increase it up to about 14. And then I'm going to increase my threshold just to 49. And that looks good to me, so I'm going to select this top uh, trace style, so it says trace. And then I will move the photo aside, and that just leaves the cut lines there on the page. We're going to select it and we'll set the line color black. Any color is good except for red when we're sketching. Um, you could choose it to match your pen if you want. And now we'll open the line effects panel. That's selected and so what you choose next on this row is personal preference. This time I'm going to go with the line fill effect and I'm going to reduce my spacing to 0 0.020 and you'll just choose on your own photograph what looks best to you. And now I've got my sketch line set up but I do need to draw a rectangle so I can cut this out after sketching to fit my frame. So I'm going to choose my rectangle tool and I want it to be 7 inches wide and 5 inches high, so I'll use my scale tool in the quick access toolbar. And then all I need to do is center that again with the quick access toolbar. And those look good, so I'll group it. And I'll just center that on the page one more time. All right, so we're ready to go to the send panel. And again, we'll choose the line action tab as I always do when I'm doing sketching. And here you'll notice there's one of these line colors that's no color. That's actually for the photograph itself and we can just ignore that. It's not going to try and cut and it's off the page anyways. But just so it's out of the way, I'm going to drag it to the bottom. Okay, so my black line color, I want to be at the top, and I want that one to sketch in the right tool holder, so I will set that to tool 2 on the right side, or the blue circle. Uh, the 
paper, the material can really be any paper. Um, this one, when we cut it, we'll set it to pattern paper. So that's the right thickness for the cardstock I'm using. On this first line color, we want it to sketch. And the tool we're going to use is going to be another uh, other brand of pen in the pen holder. And then we'll just double check our red cut line. We want it to be in the left tool. It is set to cut. And it's got the right material set to cut. And it's got our blade for the tool. Now remember, if you're using a single tool holder, you can ignore this tool number column. And you can either use a pause in between there to uh, swap your tools in between. Uh, and actually, you can just check cut or not to cut one at a time, uh, whichever works out best for you. OK, so this is ready to send. It will sketch with the black pen. And then it will immediately cut the outside with the blade. We're using the pen holder again. So I'm going to take the cap off of my gel pen. And we'll just slide this in here. Again, you could unscrew that completely and put it on your pen, or you can just leave it kind of loose in the holder. We want the tip of the pen to touch the top of the cap, and so we'll just hold that in place as we screw it in tightly. And that's at the right height. So that's ready, and we'll just go ahead and, oh, I will go ahead and scribble a little bit, get that ink flowing. Load that tool in the right side. Get our paper loaded. And once we load that, we'll just click send in the software and it will sketch first and then cut. Now, this design in particular took about 25 minutes for the Cameo to completely sketch the whole thing. Um, if you are working with tighter lines, tighter spacing, that's going to take more time. If you leave your spacing further apart and wider, it'll take less time. So just be prepared for that when you're sketching. Now, if you use a metallic or a glitter pen, you'll be able to see this kind of shine as you turn it into the light. We'll just insert it into a frame and it's done. Tracing and choosing the right photo can take some practice, but being able to draw photos with a pen in your silhouette machine is pretty cool. I hope you've enjoyed this class on using sketch pens and the sketch functions in Silhouette Studio. Now you know how to find sketch designs in the design store, how to sketch and then cut using cut by line color in the send tab, how to use silhouette sketch pens, how to use other pens in the pen holder, how to sketch in multiple colors, and how to convert a photograph into a sketch design. As you practice the techniques in this class, I'm confident you'll find new ways to use sketch pens and unique ways to use the sketch functions in the software for other tools in your Silhouette machine. Check out our other classes and tutorials on Silhouette 101 through Silhouette101.com and the Silhouette YouTube channel. You can also reach out to Silhouette Support for help at silhouetteamerica.com. Have fun with your new sketching skills.